Tom here from Martin Systems. Are you one broken Windows update away from switching to Linux? Well, let me show you the application that I use to run Linux as my full-time desktop to run my business, and let's dive into some of the details. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, including a link to our Patreon if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter. We also have a swag store where you can get shirts and other items that are for sale, and that changes from time to time what's available and what's not, so go ahead and check that out frequently. And finally, our forums. If you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about this video, suggestions for new videos, or just reach out, say hi, and talk tech, our forums are a great place for that. All right, now back to the content. Now, the first question everyone asks when you talk about Linux on the desktop is what distribution are you running? And I'm running Pop! OS, and it has been wonderful. I switched to it a few years ago. I actually switched to full-time Linux desktop almost 10 years ago now. The early versions of Ubuntu were rough, and I would not have brought all of you along for the journey on that. Um, it took a lot of dedication to figure out workarounds to run things on a Linux desktop back then. Fast forward here to 2020, and things are way easier. Uh, most applications, well, many of the ones I use are web-based that run my business, but even the ones that aren't, there's plenty of applications that I use, and that's the ones I want to cover uh, that run locally here in Linux that are open source that I manage my business with. So Pop! OS, why did I choose this? Well, Ubuntu did a nice job on a desktop. Pop! OS took and polished that up a little bit. I think they just did a great job. And I'm not here to have an entire uh, debate. Many Linux users want to debate the validity of their choice in desktops, and I don't debate people on it. I'm happy with whatever desktop you'd like to choose. That being said, I do find for new users, Pop! OS or Ubuntu, either one of those work very well because you can find most of the problems that you run into, especially as a new user, a quick Google search of the error message will reveal how to get that thing you need configured inside of Ubuntu, or by extension, Pop! OS being built on Ubuntu, you'll find an answer pretty quick or support for it. And there are a couple applications I don't have on the list here that I probably could. Uh, one of them would be like Zoom. If you download Zoom, it'll say, are you running Ubuntu or another operating system? You can pretty much just answer Ubuntu for any of those one-off uh, proprietary applications that I'm going to say, I guess, are part of my daily usage. I mean, Zoom has more become that because so many more people are using it. Uh, Zoom has always been good for interviews and things like that. I've used it on the channel a couple times because it's a pretty solid product for that. I know someone's raving, raving about uh, privacy concern with it, but seeing as what I do is record with it and publish it onto YouTube, I'm much less concerned about privacy but I, I see your point. Back, I'm not, well, I can't say I'm not concerned with privacy. I'm not concerned with privacy as Zoom because I'm putting it public. Privacy matters a lot to me, uh, but we're not going to get too far off topic on this. Back to the things I'm running on here. So I made a long list. Well, not too long of a list, but I have a list, I should say, of the applications. Now, the first couple things I'm going to cover here because I want to narrow this down to business use case, not everything I've ever done on Linux, but G Suite is something I use for my business. And running your own mail servers is a headache. Um, that's not really up for debate right now. A lot of people say, why don't you? And it's actually because I used to. I was a mail administrator for uh, some of the first Linux jobs I did back in my Red Hat days in the late 90s. I was a mail server administrator. I'm extremely and intimately familiar with setting up both SendMail, PostFix, and many other mail utilities and applications. Uh, they're just kind of a headache to run self-hosted mail. G Suite works really good for the overall uh, features it gets. But like I said, I'm not here to really debate that. Office 365. Um, we don't use, but we do use it for a lot of our clients. So as much as I'm going to really go on that topic. The other thing related to business, because this question comes up, but it's not as much relevant to Linux, SolarWinds and Screen Connect. Now, SolarWinds and Screen Connect are the tools we use to manage the MSP or IT side of our business. And Screen Connect is web-based and SolarWinds is web-based, except Screen Connect launches a tool so I can connect remotely to people's computers. And that works perfectly fine in Linux. So that is something we use quite a bit of, um, and that's how I manage other Windows computers. So I, I have it on here as a list. I have reviews of each of these products. Um, they're probably, unless you're working in IT, not something you'll ever use, but worth mentioning. Same thing with Invoice Ninja, web-based, but that's how we do all of our invoicing. I've got, you know, a review of that. Local applications. Now here's where I want to talk more about running Linux on the daily to run my business. And when it comes to money, K my money. I've got a review on uh, this particular product. It is, I think that M is capitalized. Yeah, like that. 
And I've got a review on this. This is handles all the ledger, and I'm not going to open it right now because I'd have to, you know, redact information or blur out the screen. But I've got a review on that if you want to dive into it. And K My Money's great for doing all the ledger. I don't use QuickBooks or any of those. Now, QuickBooks Online does work in Linux because it's a browser based, but uh, some people that may not work. And I'm not absolutely guaranteeing this is the application to run your business with, but take a look at it. It's pretty slick and it's open source and free. It's also cross platform. Now, drawings. We definitely do drawings because, well, we do a lot of networking and we're doing IT work. So uh, the best way to s figure out what someone needs is first map out what they have and then figure out how do you want to fit the new puzzles in place. So a lot of my job does require me to uh, do some drawing. And diagrams.net, I've got a review of this particular product on my channel. It, it's just great for doing that. It's uh, open source and free and, of course, cross-platform. So uh, we can easily have it interop with our clients no matter what they use. I think Shutter can get its own review, and let me pull Shutter up real quick. Shutter is a screenshot tool, and it just is really easy. And I know when you talk about being able to very quickly go, let me point at what we're talking about here. We're talking about Shutter, uh, but I need to redact the things we haven't talked about, and we'll just drag a little blur over there. Maybe we'll blur this part here and hit save. It very quickly allows me to screenshot and put arrows on things. And if you follow me on Twitter or uh, if you interact with me much at all on any of the chat platforms, I'm throwing screenshots all the times of things I see, things I like. If I like something, more, I, more importantly, I have to highlight or point at something to show someone when they have a question and answer. And I send this to my staff all the time. I use Shutter to grab a screenshot. Hey guys, look right here. Look at what? Well, no, let's get more specific. Look at this where I drew the arrow to. And of course, if you've done any tech support, you've wanted really to point the arrow at something. Shutter is just one of those really simple tools for it. It does uh, desktop, workspace capture, window capture, application capture, delayed capture, uh, where you can include the cursor, not include the cursor. So if you have certain drop down menus that kind of fade away when the mouse moves, you can say, all right, do the capture, but wait three seconds and capture that. Um, and then it can organize all those captures, export them to different options. Uh, it's, it's a pretty extensive tool, but for the most part, pretty easy to use. Uh, you can do things like also tie it to Dropbox, tie it to Imager. Um, it's got different places where you can just keep uploading as you do it. So if you're creating different tutorials, also this is how I screenshot and grab things to create all the thumbnails I create for any of my video editing. So actually really great tool. Uh, Signal and Keybase, I'm not gonna show, but I've covered both of those in reviews because, well, I have a lot of personal messages in there, but those are my two favorite communication platforms. And Mumble, if you're not familiar with Mumble, yes, that's the gaming system. Uh, well, at least was popular. I don't know if, how popular it is anymore, but we use it internally here uh, for push to talk, voice to talk. So even though we're working remote or uh, remote people, we can just load up Mumble cross platform again, Windows and Linux, and easily uh, just have chat conversations ongoing. So. Uh, Push to talk is great, so you're not hearing someone while they're munching down on some chips, uh, but you can hear them when they hold a button that they of their choosing. I may do a review separately of Mumble. It's a pretty great program uh, for you know keeping communications open. Wireshark. I mean, if you're not familiar with Wireshark, you're not into network engineering. Uh, we do have to use Wireshark to help troubleshoot things. I got a few videos on diving into Wireshark, and one of them is how to tie Wireshark with PFSense along with SSH. And actually, there's more than just PFSense that supports this, but what I mean by that is if you take an SSH remotely to a PFSense box, then pull the data back over the remote SSH connection and pipe it back into Wireshark, that's not as easy to do in Windows as it is in Linux. Wireshark and Linux work together wonderfully. Now, a lot of your security-focused distributions will have Wireshark and those features built in, but outside of a quick apt-get install of things like proxy chains and, of course, this the standard SSH, you can tie together things really, really well for doing engineering with Wireshark and just standard pop OS. So apt get install or use the pop shop to install Wireshark, uh, SSH into something. And I got a video on this of how to grab a packet capture right from PFSense and not have to like go inside, download, pull the PCAP file and open it, but actually get real time filtered packet captures streamed right into Wireshark with no more than just a quick one liner SSH command. So uh, that's one of the reasons I really like that. That's a great way to do it. And it's definitely one of the tools I use a lot whenever I got to do some troubleshooting for networking. Back to the list here. Uh, Genie and Vim, they kind of go back and forth. So both of these are good tools. This is uh, Genie and it's fast and lightweight IDE. It is just like they said, fast, lightweight, simple, um, really has a lot of different options when it opens up different types of code. So if we go here and we say, uh, 
new. We can do HTML, PHP, uh, text, HTML5, Java, Python. There's a handful of different languages it has no problem understanding, and this is just a shell script right here. So it's nice being able to do it. It also has the ability to open up multiple files and tab between them. So there's a lot of nice of these that you get with this. And it's kind of funny, I pulled up this file, it was some notes I had from the command needed to pull a Wireshark and do a TCP dump and pull that data right in here. This is that one line command that would pipe data right in. So pretty slick that this, uh, that this how that works in here. Now I mentioned Vim, and of course, once you go to the terminal, I have Vim open down here and I have the window split with Tmux. We'll actually unsplit them right now. Uh, Vim and Tmux kind of go hand in hand together to me from my daily usage because I'm, you know, SSHing in, fixing a lot of things, uh, setting up a server for a client, monitoring or modifying something on some of our server stack, and being able to quickly split the window and SSH into another server again, and then Vim over there. So it's kind of a back and forth between them. Um, but I gotta admit, Genie's really nice uh, being able to handle everything right in the UI here. But Vim is one of those ones I do consider really important. Now, it's not exactly something like necessary. You can't switch to Linux desktop without learning the command line. It's handy and will help you in the future, especially if you do some network engineering or the, some of the DevOps stuff that I do, but it's not necessary. But I'll mention it is something I use all the time along with Tmux. Now, I finally will also mention when it comes to running the command line and terminal, I'll leave a link to these two videos, my customized shell, my customized bash terminal setup. These are things I have videos on how, I, how you set them up, how to learn them, and how I handle uh, doing all of that. It works quite well. Back over to the list. And a couple last ones on there are going to be OpenVPN and SyncThing. So these are more just utilities, uh, not really applications that I use. But when I need a VPN or something, uh, Pop! OS makes it easy. It have all these set up in OpenVPN. So if I need to I'll jump back over to my house like this, I'm at the office now, and boom, I'm SS, uh, VPN, OpenVPN'd in, and now I can get to any of the servers or any of the resources at my house pretty quickly kind of related, but sync thing is running in the background. So anytime I edit any local files, I have a series of, and we'll just go over here to terminal and CD LTS slash bash scripts. And uh, these are just so random things that if I can't remember how to do something, I'll throw a little shell script on there to, uh, for some settings on things or whatever they are. Any types of files I modify, sync things always in the background. I got a whole, Dive, deep dive into sync thing of how I use it for synchronizing everything on my systems, but uh, it's kind of like just a really handy go-to for not exposing anything. Because I know a lot of people like Nextcloud and all these different web-based applications, and they're kind of heavy. Sync thing is very lightweight, runs in the background, and all I really need is a handful of my business documents and things like that. If I edit any of them, the ones that aren't shared through G Suite, I need them synced on multiple computers. Or in the case like I showed you, I have a handful of little shell scripts I write, and if I need those synced, well. Same thing, I just need them to be able to quickly sync between all the computers I have open. So uh, that's a really quick way to do it. Now, final mentions on here, and I will briefly go over them because I have an entire video on this for video creation, is GIMP, Caden Live, and Audacity. Uh, those are the last ones I can think of that I have an entire flow video on how we do everything. So how we record, how we put it together, how we assemble it, and how we publish it. Um, that's all using Caden Live in terms of the editing, OBS in terms of the capture, which I either capture it. Well, this particular case right now, you're watching it being captured on OBS through a camera that's tied to, yes, sorry, a Windows box that is one piece on there. Uh, OBS with Windows works best with this little stream deck, but when you see them, re videos recorded, um, a lot of my tutorials are recorded actually in my office that does run Linux as well. I'm just using OBS in Linux. The Stream Deck, I know there's some Python libraries my friend's been working with, um, and he's been modifying them to get them to work better with the Stream Deck. And I'm myself one Windows crazy update away from uh, formatting the computer that records this and figuring out how to get those Python uh, things to work properly with this. Uh, the Stream Deck makes the editing allow, uh, well, it allows me to do this very quickly and it doesn't work as well in Linux. That's why this particular machine is running Windows, but all the other stuff I uh, do as far as my daily usage, my laptop and my desktop, not the studio computer that records this, are all running Linux. So for the most part, it's not been that painful. There's plenty of other applications if you're into drawing or for any of those that I didn't cover uh, that work really well with Linux. Many of the applications now, more and more, if you're into like really heavy coding and development, there's actually a lot of them like Visual Studio that is completely running on Linux now. So it's 
become easier and easier over time to switch things over to Linux. For me, running my business on Linux is just an absolute convenience. Uh, it works really well. Some of my staff run Linux, some of them do run uh, Windows as well, but kind of a mix, kind of depending on what applications they use. And kind of it goes back to if you're doing a lot of support and we have to use that one tool from SolarWinds, they do have an application for remote control that launches that just doesn't work well in Linux. I never use it. It's not part of my daily use case. Uh, so for the most part, it, it's just not a problem for me, but I know that particular system. Now, I do have it set up and I do run VirtualBox with Windows inside of it, um, but it's just not that often that the uh, use case comes up where I go, okay, I gotta run Windows for this. Uh, most of the time when Windows is running a VirtualBox, it's usually because I have something special with a client that we need to do. We've had some special projects with clients and I'll spin up a special VM just for them uh, where they give us whatever VPN software they're using. So sometimes we're at the mercy of the clients. But then again, I don't want mucking up my main computer with whatever special VPN VPN software. So even if I was running Windows as a primary, I'd still rather have a virtual system that I use just for maintenancing that particular client if there is some special VPN or any, you know, problematic software, as I call it like that, not just they can't use standard connections. Most of the time, we're just gonna use our Screen Connect tool to remote into a client and get things done. But with more and more things becoming web-based and most of the time people's general daily habits, uh, just have them in the browser. And my uh, parents are no exception to that. My dad runs Linux on his desktop because he's not tech savvy in any way. He just wants a computer he can turn on and work and he just opens up the browser. That works for him. That's actually the only app he even uses is the browser. Uh, he uses a Chromebook laptop and that. So for some of the use cases where people are more web-based, it works really well. But from my daily usage standpoint, those are the apps I use. Uh, let me know what apps you use. I'm always interested in learning what some of the other people, um, you know, sometimes there's some suggestions and things like that. It's always interesting to have a discussion on. Uh, but hey, thanks. And if you're like me, though, like I said, one more Windows update and I may have to uh, get rid of the one studio computer that runs Linux here or Windows because ah, those Windows updates can be really pesky and some of the other quirkiness in Windows. Once you kind of get used to the flow and all the different shortcuts offered inside of Linux and how you do window management, you just feel so much more efficient and less constricted like I do in Windows. But um, hopefully uh, this helps you on your journey. If you're thinking about it, go ahead and take the dive, grab a computer, load it, don't dual boot. I'm not really a big fan of that. Just you got to go full in because if you dual boot, you, you just keep switching back over to the operating system you prefer and you don't learn the other one. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.